Hello and welcome back. Well, last time we made some changes to our flow here. And uh, as you can see, we decided to take the data that we were bringing in. And we still have a little bit sitting inside the queue right here. You can see we're splitting out there. And we added the Jolt Transform JSON here, which in turn, this is the uh, script that we put in there. As you can see, I went ahead and put it in a label out on the outside. It's, I kind of like myself um, adding labels onto the canvas and then populating them with key information I like. So like if I had a select query up here that was going into a database, instead of having to double click inside of it all the time to go to properties and read the whole thing, right? Uh, I've been enjoying just throwing a label down to the canvas and populating it next to it and then just placing it next to the processor that it involves normally. That way it can remind me quickly with just a quick glance there to see what's going on. Besides like using them to label groups because you can also, uh, whoops, not that one. You can grab the label if you want, stretch around something, maybe give this a name here and then you're good to go there too. So what I want to do this time is start to build out a new flow that extends off of this current flow. And the idea behind this is to add for ourselves the extended, well, what I really want to do is take this and turn it into a CSV again. So we took, we took it basically from text, we brought it down, made changes to it, and now we have changes done, right? We, trip, we went ahead and got rid of some of that data we weren't using that we decided we I needed less columns there. So I'd like to take those results now and write them back into the directory because maybe I need that information for, I don't know, some archiving and something like that. So let's go ahead and do that because you can use this a lot of different ways. Uh, I can think of instances at work where uh, we have third-party application where the only, we're, we're not necessarily, I'm not able to get to that application directly for say security concerns or uh, maybe it just doesn't have a good interface that that allows you to get to its backend data and directly into it so maybe it's a third-party vendor a software right and they just don't want you they don't want to provide uh, access to that root information so you can't write directly into the database that supports that application but they offer an alternative like hey uh, if you Dump the file. If you dump the data into, say, a directory, we'll go ahead and pick it up and take it on, take it from there and do what we need to do. So this could offer a quick, easy solution to something like that. So let's go ahead and start building this out. Now, first thing we need to do here is get ourselves a couple additional processors. And where we're going to be doing this from is the Jolt. Uh, the Jolt should provide a good spot for us to extend off of because this has the changes we're looking for. And let's go ahead and bring the processor we need first. So in order to get all the way to the CSV, uh, one thing I want to do is bring in another evaluate JSON. Uh, let's see, eval, there it is, JSON path right there. All right, uh, yeah, evaluate the JSON path because this data comes out of the jolt as JSON, right? So we want to take that, take the success relationship there, expand that out a little bit, give us some room here. And then what's this, what this is going to do is basically it's going to continue writing down here to the convert JSON to SQL and put it inside of our MySQL database in the table there. But at the same time, it's going to send a copy of that into this other success. So we can easily split and multiply our data around to get it around to different areas, right? So we have the evaluate JSON path. And what we need to do is write to the attributes. And let me go ahead and show you why. So after this, our next step is going to be a CSV. So we have the option to use, really, this is the easiest one. We don't have anything that says, like, put CSV, right? But what we can do is write the attributes to a CSV and create one. It generates a CSV representation of the input flow file attribute. The, re the resulting CSV can be written to either a newly generated attribute named CSV attributes or written to a flow file as content. So we're going to take that. And our intent is to take it down here and do that one. And then that'll make CSV, but it will make individual flow files still that are CSV format, basically. So we'll have to take it from here, and we're going to have to merge that content together so we can kind of get one file or smaller or larger files 
where we're not sending hundreds of CSVs out there, thousands of CSVs. We kind of want to combine them into bigger buckets, right? So first of all, let's go ahead and finish filling out this evaluate JSON path. So we change the destination, right? We want to do, we want to send these to the attribute of the flow file. And return auto detect is good, path uh, found behavior. We can go ahead and stick with ignore and no values. We don't need to change those right now either. So what we need to do is if we, just like we did over here, right? We need to add a list of attributes that we want to create. So in this case, it's going to be, let me think about what we're gonna do here. Let's go get that list real quick. So we have, we need a we need a example file. So let's go ahead and start this one. We'll get an example going this way. There we go, we got a couple to look at here now. And we got to remember what were the name, how did we restructure this JSON when we trimmed things out? All right, there we go, we have a copy there. We can work with that. And then throw this over here. So I'll just keep things on, make it easier. Just throw things out here real quick so you can see. And it looks like what we're gonna do, oops, we'll paste that there. So we need to change it up, clean it, because it requires a basically comma separated list of uh, attributes here. And let's get rid of the stuff we don't need. Ooh, whoa, a little bit too much there. Okay, let's do this again here. There we go. Keep the ID. And this will be very helpful. There we go. Normally I would just do this in a, oh, notepad plus plus, right? Cause I can easily edit things there. Okay, we got ourselves a little CSV list here. I'll just leave it there for right now. These are what we're, oh, yeah, these are what we're gonna make into our, we don't need a CSV list, I forgot. I'm thinking too far ahead here. I have to do every property one at a time. So the event timestamp. And then we have geolocation. And then we have depth. Uh, magnitude. And keep going here, ID. Place. And finally, we have type. All right. So there's all the attributes we're going to be adding to the attribute section of our flow file. So I'll create new ones for us. So I think we'll keep this around for a little bit longer, just in case. We have 160 here now. So now we need to send them on to the next step that we need, which is we're going to send the match relationship down to the attributes to CSV. We're going to terminate the others right now because we're not doing any type of logging or anything at this time. And now attribute to CSV. So let's take a look at this guy. So in here, we have the option to, we want the attribute list. So all the list or the list of attributes that we want to add to the CSV. If we want to work with regular expressions inside the attributes, we can do that. Where do we want this to go? I mean, we can write the CSV basically to an attribute if we want to. But in this type, in this case, we want the content. So we'll write it there and override that. We want no, we don't want the core attributes. We just need the ones that we're asking for. So now this is where our separate list will come in. Handy that we just created. We can go ahead and put that in there. And all done, we have a separated list now. Go ahead and hover over it. We have them all in there, so we're good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and give it a little test. <coughs> Excuse me. And what does it say? JSON path is invalid because exactly one JSON must be set for a destination content. Okay, so what am I getting wrong here? Oh, I gotta think about this. 
we have evaluate done here. <coughs> we have content, auto detect. We have all of them specified here. So I'm not sure if that's the problem. What are we missing? See, this is where it's easy to make mistakes in here or miss something. JSON paths is invalid because exactly one JSON path must be set if you're using destination in the flow file. All right, so content, ignore, empty. We have all these set. Hmm, this is gonna get me a little confused here. Oh, I don't see what we're missing actually. Failure, match, unmatch. And then we bring in con we're writing into content. Oh, ha, my bad. We want to write these to attribute. Content is down here. Okay, see, mistake solved, figured it out. <coughs> so that was the whole point, right? Because this is attribute to CSV. These up here, we weren't writing them to the attribute, we were writing them to content. Because I jumped ahead, I was thinking about the CSV part. Okay, so that's done. Now we can go ahead and push that out. And there we go, we have 335 right there. So we know that's gonna be, if we take a look at the list in the queue, we can go ahead and click on the I for that, take a look at the attributes and scroll through, event timestamp, and we have a couple others. We have file name in here too. Yeah, keep track of that, that might be helpful later. Geolocation, ID, magnitude. Okay, so we're good to go. Now we're good to go here too, as far as I can see. It looks like we got that set correctly. So now we need to think about what's the next step after this. Well, this is gonna create the 345 individual CSV flow files. I don't want that. What I wanted to do is combine these. And there is a thing called merge. We have merge content and merge record. In this case, we are gonna go with the merge content. Go ahead and connect it with a relationship here on success. And we'll drop this right over there. And then under merge content, we'll take a look at this guy. So we have a whole bunch of options in here. If we scroll down, you can see them. And they all do different things depending on the output and the size of the files we're trying to get to. So in this case, we are gonna go ahead and make a couple changes to it. Not a lot though, because honestly, we can get away for what we're trying to do with using a lot of these defaults. So we have what's called a merge strategy. It determines how it does merging. Uh, uses an algorithm, you can decide which one you want to do. In this case, we're using bin packing algorithm. They also have defragment as well. And you can see from this one, combines fragments that are associated by attributes back into a single cohesive flow file. So you have a lot you can do in here. Stick with the bin packing though. We're gonna stick with the uh, format. So the format lets you determine the format that will be used to merge the content. And in here we have tar. See, we can create ourselves a little tar file, a zip file. Matter of fact, if you wanted to, you could tar and zip it. <laughs> Flow file version three, two, and one, and binary and abro. So in this case, we're sticking with the binary concatenation because that will get us the output that we're looking for. And then we also have ourselves a correlation attribute name. We don't need to worry about that. We're just shoving everything together. We don't care what's what. Uh, do not merge on common metadata. We'll keep that. Minimum number of entries. You know what? I just want bigger files, so I'm going to say the minimum per bucket is a thousand. We'll say the maximum could be five hundred thousand. If I end up with one fat file, I'm not too worried about that. Not in this case, right? Uh, it, we can control when it creates new buckets also by our bins by the uh, group size. I mean, if we want to have a maximum size, we can use that as well. A maximum age. So if you take a look at this one, it says the maximum age of a bin that will trigger a bin to be completed. So you can tell it like, hey, after every minute, go ahead and make a new bin. You can do something like that. The strategy for delimination, which is going to be text in our case. So the reason for that is the values, the values of header, footer, demarcator will be specified in property values. So we're gonna stick with that. And then we can add a header to our file, which is gonna be one header per file. And we can also do a footer if we wanted to. Okay, so in this case, we do want a header. So let's apply that. We want to use the same list we already have. 
And if I remember correctly, you do have to keep these in order because it's just going to write it. It's not going to know how to mash them together if you don't. So we'll go ahead, oh, wrong one. We'll go ahead and add that into the merge. Come down here, header, put the header in there, say OK, and we're good to go. And then we don't need a footer. Oh, and how do we want to do this? So file name specifying the demarcator to use. If not specified, don't demarcator is supplied. This property will only in binary concatenation, right? So in this case, we don't need to do it, not for what we're doing here. And we're good to go on the last one. Keep the path, no compression here. You can pick compression if you're zipping it, what level of compression you want. And tar modified time, you can change that and have it applied to use an expression as well. We'll go ahead and apply that. So that gets us three processors that we have built to get to what we're looking for. And we need to get rid of the failure relationship, terminate that guy. So we're good here on that one now. And we have our merge created as well. So this gives us a really good starting point. Uh, let's go ahead and end it here. When we come back, we should be able to finish this up and get this written into a CSV and put it into our directory. So I'll catch you next time. You have a good day.